Hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, the wife and I are trying to start our garden this year by um, getting little seedlings ready. Uh, we got, uh, yeah, I know it's legal here in Canada, but, you know, we actually only have vegetables. Um, and I'm also lazy tonight, so it's time for a lazy project. So I've got this 40-watt uh, grow light that connects directly into the mains. I've got uh, this, which is a thermal adhesive tape. So those two. Um, and I got a box full of heat sinks, which I have not looked at yet. Um, well, I mean, I've looked at them before, just not today for this project. So I want to find a heat sink that I can easily mount to something, because uh, I need to suspend the light on top of the um, grow area. This guy might work. You can see I got it at the old uh, thrift store there. This one might work. This one here has sort of mounting lugs. Which I like. Uh, it has screws here which I won't use. This, uh, someone sent me this, three of these. Um, these are for solid state relays, but I don't actually have any solid state relays. Ooh, I could just glue it on. I'm gonna take this stuff out because it's not actually where it should go. Um, I don't actually know how much heat this will dissipate, so that'll be part of this video here today. Is uh, gonna take a look. I think. That's the mounting mechanism for this thing. And there's missing like two of these screws, but I might have something available. I have these um, CPU heat sinks, but they're, they're kind of useless for this because they have no, you know, I'd have to drill and tap in. Honestly, like I said, I'm feeling lazy tonight. I, ain't nobody got time for that. Um, so yeah, I think these guys are my best option. So, yeah, let's see if we can use those. So this thing doesn't seem too bad, actually. Um, if I'm just looking at this. If it fits in between these holes, which I don't think it will, I can always use these screws for additional mechanical holding. It just barely doesn't fit. Uh, actually, that concerns me a little. Oh, man, it's so close. It'd be ideal if it fit in there, but oh well, that should do. Like I said, this is uh, this is not going to be super precise. This is going to be mostly because I don't feel like doing anything precise. These are uh, my uh, mystery Patreon's scissors. They sent this to me in a mailbag accidentally. Um. Yeah, we're going to have to couple as much as we can here. Because, honestly, if if we don't get this full coverage, it might not cool properly. I'll put that guy on there. I don't know if this stuff is going to be sticky enough to hold it permanently there, but that's what we're doing experiments for. I have no idea if this thermal tape is any good either, as far as thermal conductivity. I know I got thermal tape to be really thin, this really thin stuff. I think it's 0.2 or 0.3 mil. Oh no, Let's see, I wasn't paying attention. Ah, that should be full coverage enough. Um, this one looks a little bit grubby. A paper towel here and some alcohol. Got this towards the start of the pandemic. I was really happy to have found it. I guess in hindsight I should have done this prep work to the back side of the LED, but like I said, feeling lazy. Maybe this this video will all be done in one take. Okay. So, peel the tape off of here. Then we're going to have to test the temperature. Oh, I almost made a fatal mistake. Got to solder some wire onto here first. 
The reason I said that is if this heatsink does a phenomenal job, for example, uh, it'll dissipate all the heat that we're trying to put into this um, in, into this LED in order to solder to it. So basically, if that heatsink is any good at all, and if this tape was any good at all, the, the thermal tape, then we wouldn't have been able to solder to the uh, LED. Unfortunately, you gotta get these things really hot um, because they're, they are um, aluminum backed. So maybe that wasn't smart. Should I use the uh, mat like that? Okay, um, some strippers. These are the ones that another maker sent. This is a really thin wire, but uh, 40 watts at 110 volts is uh, really not that bad. Get out of there. This one just keeps breaking. Okay, I'm gonna snip these a little bit further back. I just want really short ends. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, black on live simply because that's the uh, that's just a convention. Um, in the walls here in North America, the black wire is the the one, the live wire. Um, it's a little bit silly because kind of in principle they do the same thing, but in practice they are different because typically the neutral is connected to ground somewhere, either in your house or in your power station. Yeah, that should be good. Got one little hair. Okay. So now I should be able to just um, tape that on. And ideally, I'll be able to find a three-prong um, plug to connect this with, because then if it's a three-prong, then I can just screw one of the like a third wire to the aluminum and have it be a ground and again I don't even know if this thermal tape is any good um, it's obviously not as good as thermal adhesive actually I shouldn't say almost I, I, sh I shouldn't say obviously because it's potentially better I just don't know. So I'm going to bias it up towards there so that the wires have a little bit of breathing space. I'm just going to push down on this whole thing and tape it down. And then ideally I would drill a little hole in here to zip tie these wires to. For now I can move them around like this, sort of trap them there. Okay, not too bad. Got to strip the other ends. Okay, off to find myself a piece of plug. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, no ground for us. I found this uh, super crusty old wire, uh, which, you know, was left behind by the previous owner of the house. Um, and I went to get this um, icstation.com um, K-type thermocouple thing. And I got a plastic clamp, and we're just going to clamp the thermocouple 
you know what, we're just going to clamp it sort of like this. And this is reading 18.7, which is nice because I've got another thermometer in here which is reading about 18 and a half. So that is fairly close to accurate. I'm going to move a little bit of the uh, combustible material. Uh, and I have not cheated. I have not plugged this in before turning on the camera. I have a piece of welding glass here. Hopefully you cannot see my reflection. Either way, I'll just edit it out. So you should see the surroundings glow here, but uh, here goes. Corntact. It is on. Okay, if you don't believe me, trying my best not to um, uh, you know, touch the metalwork because we do not have a ground. So this will continue to climb. Uh, I'm going to let this go uh, and I'll bring you back when it reaches equilibrium. Uh, the camera battery might die, so we'll see how much of this footage will survive. So I had to flip it up onto its side because uh, what had happened is the welding glass was keeping in a lot of the heat. And once I flipped it up to its side, it seemed to have stabilized around uh, 65 degrees Celsius, which is not actually fair because uh, it is sitting on its end. It'll be in open air in the final place it's going to be used. So I feel like uh, this tape and this um, heat sink will be just fine. Uh, I'm going to just pull this clamp off. Um, even the air of me getting up and walking towards it uh, changed its temperature big time. So I'm holding just the plastic and put it on top of the electronics here. Fifty five degrees and the little chips that do the regulation. Uh, again looking for something plastic. I was just stab myself with a knife off screen. Just uh, something to hold up against. Little chips that do the regulation. They're about 50. Yeah. Near 60 degrees anyways. So this is all in Celsius, obviously. So I think this will be just fine. So now basically I just have to hook it up to a little piece of stick and put it up on top of the plant pots that I'm starting plants in. Hopefully it'll be decent. So I'm glad you came to join me on my little experiment here. If you have any other suggestions, make sure to pop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.